Hello guys, this is Watts, Poland's main toy dude. This is the second part of my review of Gundam Astray Red Frame Kai Master Grade version and in this part I'm going to show you some of his accessories and weapon systems. Sit tight, it's going to be very interesting. And we shall start this part with look at the katanas which are the signature weapon of Red Frame. Gabera straight and target pierce and believe me there is no, you're, no way you're going to tell them apart unless you stick up the swords because the Chinese recognition signs are hidden inside the handle. Yeah, it happens. As you can see, very nice weapons when they are in the scabbards. They are even higher than the neck of Red Frame. So it gives him a, a, I don't know, an image of a wielder of very strong powerful swords. Looks great and as you can see, these cupboards are attached on special holders connected with a ball joint to the thigh and you can disconnect this and then we have this nice sword. As you can see, I'm not pulling it all the way in because there is this one issue with these swords. I'm not talking about the fact that they're very bendy and so very fragile. I mean the fact that Unlike the perfect grade, there is no pin that secures the blade inside of the handle. So if you try to pull it in and then take it out, oh, that can happen, but usually it gets... Oh, see? If you try to do it too fast or just the wrong way, this will pop off. So you have to take it out manually. But to make it a little bit better, to rest my anger, you can see that this has chrome coating, which is very rare for a normal Gundam. It looks really fantastic. And there is also a only face motif on the guard, I think. Only face here, only face here. Great. And you can attach the swords via the new Master Great hand connection. And the scabbard goes with the same plug so you can make a pose when Red Frame is drawing his sword, or both of swords. So yeah, a good weapon for display purposes, but as a toy, well, it has issues that makes me want to say you have to be careful with, while playing with this, because one bad move and this will break. Tough luck. So these are Gabera Straight and Tiger Pierce. But there's also another weapon system very important for this guy, and I'm of course talking about Tactical Arms 2L. Let's bring it on! And here it is, Tactical Arms 2L in one of its many forms. This is basically a multi-purpose, multi-form weapon that, usually in standby mode, attaches to the back of Red Frame, and it does so by using this extension piece that you saw earlier, you connect these plugs to the respective holes, like that. You take the red frame and you use this strange shaped plug, you attach it like this, and now we have red frame with tactical arms, which is so huge that it doesn't even cover in this picture. Or maybe it does. Oh, much better. So yeah, as you can see, Tactical Arms 2L in one of its standby modes, as I call it, because I don't find any purpose for this other than cool looking. And this is the Delta form, one of the so called, I don't know, expansions of the flight mode from Red f of Blue Frame. But it also has another mode called the standard V form. And this is the V form, so you can see it's pretty much Delta form, only more compacted. The parts of the Delta are compacted into wings, the fins on the engines are expanded and also in the back this black piece from the bottom is changed with something like a claw. It makes most sense in its other form that I'm going to show you in a moment. But yeah, basically that's the V form. If you want you can also invert the wings so they are facing downwards so it looks like Blue Frame's flight mode. But Maybe I'll show it later. Let's go on to another mode. The Tactical Arms also has several weapon modes and I think I'm going to start with the classic sword form like the blue frames, only this one is different. So first you want to take this part and switch it like this. It's not rotating, you have to take it out, replug it 
it's a shame. Now you have to take these parts and the instruction tells you to actually re take them off and do it out of the main frame, but I think that's exaggeration. You can easily rotate them and transform them while they are attached to the main frame. Now you rotate this, rotate this, and now you connect this. And as you can see, it's assu slowly assuming the shape that it's supposed to. Yeah, we take this. Now we take this part, just flatten these. Okay, and now optionally you can leave these out or in. I'll do them in to be instruction correct. And rotate this handle. And you have the sword form, which is huge, a really huge sword. Anti-ship one. I don't wish to be in the mobile suit that has to fight this thing, even if the pilot is not killing anyone. But still. Oh yeah, these custom parts that are usable in yet another mode. And the handle, which is different from blue frames, because it actually looks like a gun. And it has three hand connection points here, one here, which makes it a lot easier to grip this thing, because this is not as thin as blue frames. And how does it look attached to this guy? Oh, let's see. Okay, who wants to fight red frame again? Oh, no one? What so? So, yes, in sword form, connected to the red frame, it looks amazing. A Gundam holding a sword bigger than himself. Something you can hardly forget. As you can see, he plugs his hands into the handles. And yes, he can hold his weapon like that without the use of the action base, which was probably added to the set for this purpose, among the others. And yes, in more bizarre poses, it's actually advised, but not in this one, because he can handle it on his own. I don't know where the sheer weight of tactical arms and sword form will make it fall apart, but for now, I'm enjoying the moment. So yeah, looks great. I lost multiple great poses that I'm likely to show off in another part. But before we do this, let's look at one more weapon mode of tactical arms. You guessed this. Not the Gatling form, the Bimbo Gun form. And here is the Bimbo mode. Look at this. This is simply huge. This is Astray, and this is his weapon. Really big weapon. And it also has a nice beam part effect, which makes the whole configuration look like a giant beam needle gun. I can't understand why this is yellow, really. It could be blue, it could be pink, it could be red, but no, they decided it's yellow. I have no idea. Again, this is a bit bendy, not as bendy as the swords. Mm -hmm. Looks really nice. And also, this is one of the two modes in which the custom parts that are not present at blue frame make most sense. Because we have this and this red frame is supposed to grip it and use it as his personal weapon. Also, for this purpose, we have these green stickers, which are the visor visors of the aiming sensors. So, really nice. And because this is so huge, and unfortunately it creates balance issues when attached to red frame, so this is why we have the action base, which attaches to this hole, and like this, and it can stand on its own now. And, yeah. It just stands there. But that's not really interesting. Let's see how it looks when Red Frame is handling this big-ass weapon. Let's see it. What can I say? It looks fantastic. There are very few Gundams that are using bow-based weapons, and when they do, it looks really fantastic, especially when it's built the way Red Frame is. Really fantastic. Looks like he's going to pulverize any target that he has in sight. Amazing. Yeah, and the grips are really working well on this one. And, uh, yeah, if they're working so well, the question is, can Red Frame hold this weapon without the action base? Let's see! And the answer is yes. Red Frame can use the weapon without the action base. Although it does make him look like he's just preparing to fire, but it still looks great on the shelf. And I must say, I'm impressed by the grip of the hands. They are still holding nice, and they are supporting the weapon well enough that... This is not touching ground in any place, so it's really fantastic. You know what, there are so many other things about this toy I want to tell you, tell you about, but the time is running, so we'll just have to wait until part 3. See you then!